We begin with Chief Foreign Correspondent Richard Engel reporting from Kyiv. And a warning, some of these images are disturbing. With its military advance stalled, it seems that Russia is increasingly targeting civilians. A missile exploded here in Kyiv around 8 a.m. this morning. No military targets anywhere in sight, just apartments, a kindergarten, an elementary school, and a grocery. An entire community devastated in a split second. Attacking apartment complexes like this is a terror campaign to frighten Ukrainians into surrendering. But it's not working. And all the damage here and across this country is only convincing Ukrainians of the need to fight even harder or lose everything. In front of her building, Natalia was having a first cup of coffee when suddenly her window exploded into shards. Everything started crumbling. I felt the shockwave and I fell on the floor, she says. But even covered in iodine for all the cuts, she's optimistic. Our wonderful boys and girls are fighting and we will win. Our enemies, those damned occupiers, say we have some Nazism here. I don't understand what's happening in those brains. Of theirs. This is my mother, this is my father. Nearby, Eugenia was salvaging what she could from her apartment, especially photos. Eugenia visited a neighbor who was grateful to be checked in on. It's okay, Eugenia tells her. Just promise me on our victory night you'll drink champagne with me. But in Russia, Vladimir Putin is determined for that toast to never happen. In a mass stadium rally today, bristling with Russian flags, he praised the troops on the anniversary of the annexation of Crimea from Ukraine eight years ago and said this war is going to plan. As Russia attacked new locations today, including an aircraft repair facility outside Lviv, near the Polish border. Lviv has been a relative safe haven, a transit point for millions of exiting refugees. Activists in the city lined up 109 empty strollers for the 109 children Ukraine says Russia has killed so far. In a war that has also now claimed American Jimmy Hill from Minnesota. He was in Ukraine to be with his partner, who has a chronic medical condition. Jimmy was a friend to everyone, um, but he had a love for um, Irene that they were a bond. And if you can find that, you are so fortunate. The fates of many other civilians remain unclear in the devastated city of Mariupol. New video shows body after body laid out on the ground, some marked with makeshift crosses. It's the same city where this week Russia bombed a theater, even though there were signs outside in Russian that it was full of children. Ukrainian officials say 130 people have been rescued from a shelter beneath the theater, but that hundreds still remain trapped. Richard joins us now from Kyiv. Richard, you've been in Ukraine for two months. What are officials you're speaking with expecting to come next from Putin? President Zelensky is obviously very worried, which is why every day he's asking for more weapons and a no-fly zone. And multiple U.S. military officials tell me that they are deeply worried that Putin, cornered, could try and escalate his way out of this, potentially even using chemical or biological weapons. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.